age of civilization blazed not only in Asia, Africa, and Europe, but in South America as well. This is the South American Andes, a mountain range with an average elevation of over 4,000 meters above sea level. Yet, in the 15th century, the Incas birthed a civilization in this rugged terrain. Thanks to their advanced agricultural techniques, the Incas gained everything they had from the soil and worshipped the nature surrounding them. They were once the minority in this region, but gradually grew to become a dominant force which flowed into the golden Inca civilization. Sadly, the splendor of Inca civilization succumbed to the ravages wrought by the powers of the West in less than a century. continues on in the Andes even today. These are the Andes Mountains, which stretch for some 7,000 kilometers along the west coast of South America. And at the heart of these mountains, on a mountain range 450 meters above the Urumbamba River, lie the mysterious ruins of an ancient city. This is Machu Picchu, also known as the City in the Sky. It is a city built on a rocky ridge 2,400 meters above sea level. There are some 500 terraced fields that surround Machu Picchu, and the buildings of the city have been built using intricately carved stone. So, what was the reason for its construction? Generalmente, se dice ciudadela, lo que no quiere decir nada. Finalmente, Machu Picchu es eh, al mismo tiempo residencia eh, temporal. Research has revealed that this was an ancient palace complex. The walls of the royal living room are equipped with stone protrusions which supported torches. The room was under the constant protection of the royal guard. There are traces of gold which once decorated the walls inside the royal bedroom. The emperor must have fallen asleep surrounded in opulence. The emperor also had the only private bathroom in Machu Picchu. It's a city inside a red of cities that there in the época Inca. The city, which covers an area of five square kilometers, includes a temple dedicated to the sun god, which was the greatest god of the Incan Empire. And a residential area which housed workers who were in charge of production. In this way, the city was meticulously planned to serve multiple purposes. This is the residential neighborhood whose buildings are not as delicately designed as the palace. At the center of the neighborhood was a courtyard which served as the workspace. This is why the walls were equipped with protruding stones where works in progress could be hung from. Also, large windows have been placed in the walls to facilitate ventilation. But the purpose of this well, called a water mirror, is not yet known.
In this way, the Incas meticulously carved the entire city complex out of stone. Experts estimate that it took a workforce of some 10,000 people at least 40 years to complete the city. They even built an intricate network of waterways on par with any modern water supply system in complexity and design. Why did the Inca choose to erect their city so high, despite the obvious advantages of building on the plain? Well, the construction of the Incas uh... Eh, cumpliendo sus necesidades políticas ¿ya? y religiosas, eh, tenían la ubicación eh, astronómica ¿no? por razones eh, de armonización del hombre con el cosmos. This is the main temple located at the summit of Machu Picchu. The three windows of this place symbolize the founding myth of the Inca. But the significance of rounded corners, which are characteristic of Incan architecture, still remain a mystery. All we can presume is that the sunlight which shone through the windows must have illuminated the stone god figures enshrined in the temple. But there is something which the Incas consider to be even holier. Located at the very summit of Machu Picchu, this is a structure carved entirely out of a single stone. It is the Intihuatana stone. Él le tocó justamente con su dedo eh, el dios Sol, o, o antes el dios Iracocha. The year 1438 CE saw the birth of a great Incan hero. The name of the self-proclaimed descendant of the sun was Pachacutec. A prince of a lesser kingdom, Pachacuta came to power through a revolt. Then, through a series of conquests and treaties, the emperor managed to unite then various tribes of the Andes and build an empire. As a result, the Incas, who were a minor tribe, were able to build an empire that spanned 4,000 kilometers from north to south and included areas of modern-day Peru, Bolivia, and Argentina in less than 50 years after Pachacuti began his reign. Pachacuti built the city of Cusco as his seat of empire. Located 3,400 meters above sea level, it is difficult to envision modern-day Cusco as an ancient Inca capital. Most of the city's buildings are Spanish in design, due to its conquest by the Spaniards in the 16th century. But even the conquistadors could not eradicate the traces of Incan civilization completely. Although this wall is 500 years old, it is still as sturdy as the day it was built. Furthermore, the technique by which the wall was built using closely fitting stones without the aid of mortar is a mystery even to modern science. This is Coricancha Temple, also known as the name of the Incas. Originally built as a temple to the sun god during the time of the Incan Empire, Coricancha was raised by the Spanish in 1570 and its foundations used to support the church which now stands in its place. Nevertheless, the interior still contains traces of the Inca. 
These walls are proof of the painstaking effort the Incans put into the construction of the temple. They are so meticulously wrought that there isn't even space enough for a needle between the stones of the wall. By building a church dedicated to their Christian God, the Spaniards were attempting to dominate the Incans not only physically, but spiritually as well. Y es por eso que tenemos esa combinación de arquitectura inca imperial, que no es la original Quilque, como les dije, porque ellos construyeron sobre el, el antiguo ador, el templo de adoración al sol, el que tenían los Quilque, que se llamaba Intihuasi, en Quechua. Eh, y de tal manera que podemos ver todas las épocas, ¿no? la época inca, la época Quilque, que la tenemos al, en, en la parte exterior, en los andenes, la época este, española, con su arquitectura tradicional, y la, en la época contemporánea, que es la que corresponde a nuestra época. During the age of the Incas, sunlight shined through this doorway, which was ornamented with gold. And the reflection of the sunlight on the wall allowed the Incans to determine the seasons in relation to agriculture. The central courtyard of Coricancha was surrounded by temples dedicated to the sun, rainbows, moon, and stars. Figures of the gods lightning and thunder were placed in one corner, and they were regularly worshipped by the emperor and his subjects. All of the gods enshrined in Coricancha were related to agriculture. In this way, the Incans, who were a mountain people, worshipped countless gods related to nature. But foremost amongst their pantheon was Inti, the sun god. This is the reason that Pachacute, who built both Machu Picchu and the Inca Empire, proclaimed himself to be a descendant of the sun. The Incans built 320 cities radiating outwards from Cusco, the city of Coricancha Temple, in all four cardinal directions. These cities included temple cities such as Pisac, Ollantaytambo, and Machu Picchu. Also, the Incans built a vast network of roads to link these cities, which stretch for a mind-boggling 40,000 kilometers. This is why the Emperor's commands could reach even the remotest corners of the Empire in a matter of only days. It is estimated that the empire had a population of anywhere from 6 million to 10 million people at its height. The Incas, whose founding myth was related to the sun god, had an elaborate bureaucracy and advanced writing system. Also, they built magnificent cities, which became the centers of a flourishing culture. In other words, the Inca Empire had all the elements which allow us to define it as a civilization. So, how were they able to create a civilization amid the rugged and barren terrain of the Andes Mountains? The salt pans of Maras are located 3,000 meters above sea level. They've been in existence since the time of the Incan Empire and are some of the largest mountain salt pans in the world. The Andes were created 100 million years ago by the subduction of the Pacific Plate under the South American Plate. The seawater from that time still gushes out of these mountains. 
Farms, where they are used in salt pans. salt can be obtained merely by evaporating the water that gushes endlessly out of these mountains. Thanks to the lowers of the Mara salt farms, the salt they produce are rich in minerals. It is thanks to this that the Incans did not have to travel all the way to the coast in search of life-sustaining salt. This is a unique animal which is common in the Andes even today. It is the llama which can only survive in altitudes higher than 3,000 meters above sea level. Aside from llamas, the nomadic Incas also raised goats and sheep and it was through these livestock that they obtained most of their necessities. They even obtained building materials from their livestock. This is an Incan family that is building a new home. The bricks and the mortar they are using have been made by mixing clay with fiber-rich animal dung. This method allows the home to be sturdy and well insulated. In this way, the Incans have a deep understanding of their natural environment and are highly adept at using it in their lives. There are some 80 different tribes in the Andes, each with its own distinct culture. The Incans were able to adapt these cultures in order to develop their architecture, agriculture, medicine, and pharmacology. This is the main reason that the Inca were able to prosper despite residing in a barren and mountainous region. Their agricultural technology was so advanced that it exceeded that of all other ancient civilizations in mankind's history. The soil of the Andes is rich in volcanic ash, making it fertile and water absorbent. These are ideal conditions for growing produce, such as potatoes and corn. During the time of the Incan Empire, some 3,000 varieties of potato were grown. How were they able to develop and spread so many cultivars? This is Moray, located an hour's drive away from Cusco. The place resembles an ancient Roman Colosseum, but in actuality, it served as the agricultural R&D center for the Incan Empire. In order to cultivate a variety of potatoes, which are originally a subtropical plant, more adapted to the cooler climates of the Andes, ancient Incan scientists grew them at the very bottom tier of the terraces and gradually planted them higher. The very top terrace is about five degrees cooler than the bottom terrace. By gradually planting the potatoes higher, the ancient scientists were able to develop a cultivar which could survive anywhere in the Andes. This is how they were able to develop thousands of cultivars, not only potatoes, but also corn.
despite their high elevation, the lands of the Inca were lush with greenery. But the crowning achievement of the Incan agricultural technology was the coca. Usually located on a cliff near a village, the colca was built out of mud and stone. Colca in Quechua, the Incan language, means storehouse. El sistema de almacenamiento era para todo tipo de productos. En este caso, el estudio que me llevó fue los, las colcas o los almacenes para productos alimenticios. Se trabajaba, por ejemplo, se almacenaba la papa, el maíz, el charqui, que es la carne seca, o también el pescado salado. This narrow passageway was originally roofed. Past the corridor was a storage facility with a ventilated floor. This raised area was used for storing grains. In order to keep the food from rotting due to humidity, there was a ventilation shaft that ran below the floor of the facility. Five hundred years ago, the Incans built colca all over their empire, and they stored the fruits of their labor by stacking them up in these well-ventilated storage facilities. In this way, produce could be stored anywhere from a year to many dozens of years. So what is the green foliage which is layered in between the corn? It is a kind of mint-scented herb. By stacking alternating layers of this herb, the Incans were able to prevent their food from attracting flies and wild animals. La manera de conservar, por ejemplo, este, la papa o los tubérculos, antes de que se introduzca y se coloque a la colca, tenían que transformar el producto. La papa, de esa manera, no podía entrar. Tenía que ser transformada en moralla o en chuño. O sea, o sea había que deshidratar el tubérculo. Tens of thousands of colca were built all over the Incan Empire, including present-day Ecuador, Colombia, and Argentina. This agricultural production, storage, and distribution infrastructure allowed the Incans to achieve unprecedented prosperity in human history. Indigenous Incans of the region eat potatoes as their main staple. The potatoes are boiled in large pots, and the entire family gathers together in the kitchen in order to eat them. They're eaten along with raw vegetables which supplement vitamins which potatoes lack. This unique culture of the Incas is reflected in their traditional attire. Incans wear clothes adorned with bright colors. This was made possible through a technique they developed for obtaining natural dyes. As a result, quality textiles were prized even more highly than gold. The Incans believed that the color and quality of clothes symbolized a family's honor. obtained all of their necessities from nature. As a result, their worship of nature was fervent and all-encompassing. They revered and worshipped everything that affected their lives, including the land, rocks, animals, rivers, and the skies. The night sky 
held an especially deep significance for the Incans, who used it as a source of their ruminations on life and death. They even gave names of animals to around a hundred constellations. Si en el día tenemos en el valle un cóndor, en la noche se verá a su origen de imagen, es decir, a la constelación del cóndor. Si en la noche identifico a la constelación de la perdiz, del sapo, de la llama, de la alpaca, de la serpiente, también en el día veré a lo largo del Valle Sagrado de los Incas, a manera de esculturas y arquitecturas, estas representaciones como testimonios materiales de las relaciones entre el hombre y el cosmos. The ancient Incans believed that celestial bodies had a powerful effect on their lives, and they tried their best to harness that perceived power. Thus, the Incans designed their capital to resemble the leopard, a fierce Andean predator. Pisa was designed in the shape of a condor. Ollantaytambo in the shape of a llama, the favorite domesticated animal of the Incans. Machu Picchu was also designed in the shape of a condor, a bird which they believed could travel to the heavens and back. Machu Picchu is the most well-preserved of these cities. So in what way does the city resemble a condor? In order to get a better idea of this, one must hike up the steep trail of Huayna Picchu for about two hours. Soon, the majestic city of Machu Picchu comes into view. When viewed upside down, the city bears a striking resemblance to something. It is the image of a condor soaring through the sky. Machu Picchu is a great effort, like an enormous condor that constitutes a nave, a vehicle un medio que nos permita regresar a la eternidad. Machu Picchu es el último y gran esfuerzo de los Incas para vincular esa relación terrenal con la cósmica. To the ancient Incans, Machu Picchu was a gateway to the heavens. Here at the city summit, is Intihuatana, the most sacred of Incan objects which holds a startling astronomical secret. It is located 2,400 meters above sea level. And to the four cardinal directions from the sacred stone are four holy peaks. Twice a year, the sun rises from Wake Wilka, due east, climbs toward San Miguel on the opposite side, and exactly at noon, sits directly atop in Tihuatana without casting a shadow. Through this, the Incans believed that they had harnessed the power of the sun and grown stronger as a result. 
The people of the Incan Empire believed that their golden civilization had flowered through the life-giving force of the sun god. The temple dedicated to the sun god was located at the heart of Cusco, the capital of the Incan Empire. Located at the outskirts of this ancient capital is another massive ruin called Sacsayhuaman. Fashioned out of a large polished dry stone walls, the three-story structure was once thought to be an Incan fortress. <laughs> But as restoration work progressed, it was learned that Sacsayhuaman had been built in the 15th century by Pachacutec and his son, and like Coricancha, was a temple dedicated to the sun. The first zona religiosa o casa del sol fue este Coricancha, pero Coricancha ya quedó pequeño para las necesidades del imperio Inc. De ahí que se buscó un nuevo lugar. Y se, ese lugar fue precisamente trasladado a, en Sacsayhuaman. The Incans accomplished amazing feats of construction that are difficult to replicate even today. Sacsayhuaman is a stunning example of this architectural prowess. The heaviest of stones here are an incredible 360 tons. Yet they are carved with such fastidious precision that not even a razor blade can fit between them. The ancient Incans were masters at carving and fitting stones. Experts estimate that a workforce of 60,000 laborers was employed in the temple's construction. They dragged the massive stones from quarries located 15 to 30 kilometers from the construction site and fashioned them not with metal tools, but implements made of stone. This is a circular ruin located at the very top of Sacsayhuaman. The building has been raised and only the foundation remains. In the 15th century, the ruler of the Incas conducted grand rituals to the sun god here. And nearby, the emperor built another massive temple dedicated to the god of water. This was the religious center of the Incan Empire at its zenith. Tragically, fate was not on the side of these ancient people. The 15th century saw the rise of European colonialism. And to the powers of the West, South America was but a new world to be tamed and conquered. The Spanish were the first Europeans to arrive in the Panama region of Central America. The expedition was led by a man named Francisco Pizarro. Having embarked from Spain, Pizarro and his expedition traveled through Panama and Tumbes, and in 1532, finally gained an audience with the Incan Emperor in Cajamarca. Por supuesto, eh, la riqueza eh, en metales, eh, al comienzo ha sido oro, eh, que en realidad caracteriza más el norte que el sur. ¿no? En el sur hay en todo caso plata. ¿no? Hacia el norte y los españoles antes de llegar a las costas de Tumbes Eh, estaban seguramente bien informados eh, acerca de la existencia del preciado metal. The Spanish expedition presented the Incan Empire with a Bible. But the emperor threw the Bible to the ground in order to prove that his God was greater. This meant certain war. Despite the small number of Spanish troops, their superior weapons proved to be too powerful for the Incan army and the defeat of the Incans resulted in the capture of their emperor. The 
emperor told his captors, I will bestow gold enough to fill this chamber to the ceiling for my release. In order to raise the ransom for their emperor, the Incans collected gold from all over the empire, enough to fill the chamber as promised. But the credulous Incans were met with betrayal. Instead of freeing the emperor, the Spaniards summarily executed him. And forces remaining loyal to the fallen empire went into hiding deep in the mountains. Then, for 40 years, they waged a guerrilla war against the Spanish. Nevertheless, these forces were wiped out in 1572, and the Incan civilization was gradually forgotten by history. Four hundred years passed after the demise of the Incan Empire. In 1911, a young adventurer came to the Andes in search of lost Incan gold. His name was Hiram Bingham. Finally, on July 24th, Bingham discovered the lost Andean city of Machu Picchu. But finally, we have to think that this discovery for the world forms part of the process of discovery for the Peruans and for the world. The discovery of the past, 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 o el pasado que justamente recién en siglo XIX eh, y particularmente comienzos de XX hace rescatar para la memoria de los peruanos y del mundo. Y no es solo el caso del Perú, obviamente. Eh, en muchas civilizaciones que ustedes recorren ocurre lo mismo. ¿no? Hiram Bingham was looking for treasure. Instead, he discovered a crumbling ancient city and some 100 mummies hidden in the craggy cliffs. This is a museum located in Lima, Peru. The museum houses an extensive collection of Peruvian mummies. No, this is a adult Está en posición flexionada, eh, formó parte de un fardo, tiene las improntas de los textiles que, que estuvieron envolviendo el cuerpo. Tiene ofrendas asociadas como un vaso de plata al que está junto a uno de los brazos. Tiene una máscara funeraria ¿no? que, es, que está compuesta de barro y tiene pintura, pintura roja sobre, sobre, sobre la cara. ¿no? Lo que indica que pudo haber tenido algún tiempo de, de exposición ¿no? para un tipo de decoración para que pueda ser visto en público. The first historical mention of the Incan mummies comes from the Guaman Poma, a scholar from the era of the conquistadors. According to his works, the dead emperors of the Incans were treated in the same manner as when they were alive. They were given palaces, territory, and even imperial subjects. As a result, conflicts arose between the factions of the dead and living emperors, which caused a rapid decline of the Incan Empire. Entonces, estos dos personajes tenían sus uh, sus propios uh, ejércitos, le vamos a llamar, y ellos estaban en una situación donde estaban guerreando, estaban peleando por una actitud o de, de posesión de tierras o de tener poder, ¿no? Entonces es en ese momento que llegan los españoles y encuentran al imperio incaico en una actitud débil. The arrival of the Spaniards coincided with the weakening of the empire. To make matters worse, diseases such as cholera and smallpox brought by the Europeans wreaked havoc on the nation, killing some 1.2 million natives. The vast 
Spanish superiority of Spanish weapons also played a part in the empire's downfall. The Spaniards were protected by impenetrable metal armor. They were also armed with muskets and cannons which fired devastating rounds of musket balls and cannonballs towards the helpless natives. The Incas could barely put up a fight with their stone and bronze weapons. The Incans did not even use bows and arrows, thinking them to be dishonorable. Mas bien hay que enfrentarse, cara a cara, y mano a mano, con eh, armas eh, como, por ejemplo, una porra, ¿no? un mazo. Eh, o eh, si se utiliza proyectiles, es el Atlat de eh, México, en Nahua, eh, aquí en castellano decimos histórica, es decir, un implemento en realidad bastante primitivo, conocido en la historia de la humanidad desde el paleolítico, eh, una palo con gancho, eh, en el que se pone el proyectil, y este palo prolonga el largo de la mano y por lo tanto aumenta el momento de la fuerza y por lo tanto también la distancia en lo que se puede proyectar. También se utiliza la onda. The Incan Empire succumbed to the Spanish invaders less than a century after reaching its height during the reign of Pachacuta. And the last emperor was led into Cusco, bound by war. Y en la plaza principal de la ciudad, en el corazón de la ciudad Puma, en la actual plaza de armas o plaza mayor, fue ejecutado públicamente un día de importancia astronómica el día del equinoccio de la primavera. Fue muerto una tarde del de 23 de septiembre de 1572. Tupac Amaru was the name of this last Incan emperor. Only 20 years old, the emperor was brutally executed and his demise proved to be the coup de grace of the once glorious Indian emperor. Some 440 years have come and gone since then. Now Cusco, the ancient capital of the Incan Empire, has become one of South America's most popular tourist destinations. Wave after wave of tourists visit the city in order to glory in the rich historical legacies left by the Incans. Que el imperio murió, pero los Incas no. Entonces no es correcto decir que los Incas han muerto. Lo que ha muerto es el imperio. Y de ahí puedo pasar a la segunda pregunta. Eh, porque el imperio inca es un evento político importantísimo, también desde el punto de vista cultural. Chichiro, plaza pam pam, ping, matacha y palechuyucha. Añachus, munanacan, ping, no capas, munanascan, no capas, huayanascan. Once the dominant power in South America, the Inca Empire managed to establish a golden civilization in the Andean highlands 4,000 meters above sea level. Their architecture was advanced beyond our wildest imagination, and they possessed such sophisticated medical technology as to be able to perform neurosurgery. But their civilization was decimated ravaged by a foreign power beyond the ocean. Yet, even today, Machu Picchu stands testament to the indomitable spirit of a people who birthed civilization in harsh and unforgiving terrain.